Welcome back to another video. My name is Gareth James for mttpokerschool.com and today I'm going to be going through this hand that's 10 left in the $11 bounty builder on PokerStars. Let's get into it. So I came across this hand in a Facebook group and I thought it would give me a really good opportunity to go through the spot in the new version of Hold'em Resources Calculator. So let's take a look at the hand. So you can see Hero here, Paza 0303, go for the open with Ace King off, small blind folds, and the big blind jams. Now, as I said, it's 10 left, final table bubble of the $11 bounty builder on stars. And Hero here has a decision to make with Ace King off. And the question in the Facebook group was, is this an easy call or are we okay to fold? So we're gonna solve this spot right now. Let's get into HRC. All right, so in order to run this hand properly, what we're gonna do is choose an advanced Monte Carlo hand, and I'm gonna walk you through uh, the step-by-step -step process for, for running this hand. So what we can do, once we've uh, copied the hand history from, let's say, Poker Tracker or Holder Manager, whatever you're using, then you can just paste it in uh, using this button here. And as you can see, we've already got the stack sizes in there and the bounty amounts. This is really, really important. So what PokerStars does really well and helpfully is that it saves the bounty amount into the hand history. So once you paste the hand history in like we've done here, it just auto fills uh, the bounty amount in here. So really, really helpful. Uh, so shout out to Stars for, uh, for that. Uh, over here then we've got the, the payouts. As you can see, I've only done up to uh, the top 10 payouts because there are only 10 players left. Uh, just a quick hack here. If you don't have access to the lobby anymore, then you can search for the tournament ID on Sharkscope and it will give you the, the results. And the, the thing to look at though is that it gives you uh, the amount they won and also the bounty amount. So when you're working out the prize pool like this, you have to take the bounty amount off the total amount that they won. So that's what I've done here. Put in the 10 final amounts. Uh, you can see the blinds are auto filled as well. Let's take a look at this little section now. Really important that we put in the total number of chips um, because this is going to help us work out uh, or help HRC work out uh, what the average chip stack is at this stage of the tournament. So I worked out here, I believe that's 52,940,000. Is that, mm, looks about right. Let me just check on my trusty calculator. Uh, yeah, 52,940,000 chips. So what you can do again, if you have access to the lobby, you can you can actually go in and just work out what the average is and multiply it by the number of remaining players. Or you can do the number of entrants times by or multiplied by uh, the starting stack, which uh, in the bounty builders is uh, is 5,000. So yeah, there were 10,588 players times by 5,000. That's just under 53 million chips. Uh, we select that it's a PKO and you win 50% instantly and 50% goes on your head. Let's take a look at the calculation mode now. So this is one thing that you can see uh, that is different in the Monte Carlo mode is you can actually select the number of your know, max number of players in the, uh, you can just see here, basic hand and advanced hand, it's actually capped to three players. So what you might find is, you know, one player goes all in, one player calls, and then uh, the next player, let's say, you know, Let's say it's hijack jams, cut off calls, and then the button doesn't have to worry about the small blind, big blind, but actually in reality they do, right? They, they could easily wake up with a hand. So um, the original version, uh, these uh, this basic and advanced version up here, wasn't factoring that in, it was capping it at three players. So what you can do now is, is change it. And um, you know, if you're looking to do like a full table, you could change this to nine players. Uh, here, we only need five players because there's only five players at this table. Now you might think, okay, but it folds around to the button, so maybe we only need three players, button, small blind, and big blind. But actually, you know, we want to factor in the other players at the table. That's gonna have an effect on our range because um, there's this amazing thing uh, that uh, HRC does to do with uh, card removal effects and card bunching. So definitely, uh, definitely do that. Uh, we're doing advanced betting. I'm gonna click close. So go down to uh, equity model now. Uh, we want to choose the multi-table ICM because there's more than one table left. If we were on the final table, you could just choose um, ICM and uh, you wouldn't need to put in the total number of chips because it, you know, it knows that it's the final table. The total number of chips is the total number of chips in the hand, right, or on the table. So uh, yeah, we we choose this, uh, this, this option here and then we're gonna click next. So we're almost there. Um, We've got a few more bits to, to sort out. So you're gonna click this, uh, these two little uh, plus icons. I'm gonna change the remaining players to uh, to 10, and then you can see the chip average changes to uh, to 
million. Um, I like to click randomize and auto shape and then click OK. And then like we're almost done, but now we've got the, the most important part, which is to put in uh, the bet sizes. So um, you can see here what I've gone for is a 2.1 open, which is what uh, Hero did here. I've also given the option to jam because it's good to see, okay, maybe jamming is the higher EV line for certain hands. So let's include that option just to see, you know, are there some jams or is it just 2.1 big blinds? Of course, you know, we could go further than this and we could say, okay, what about limping? We could we could add some limps in there as well. But I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna stick to raises today. Um, now we can allow flat calls of opens and over calls as well. Uh, this is something that the original HRC couldn't do, but now we can do this, uh, which is fantastic. And uh, even though, I mean, I'm just, sort of backtrack on that a little bit. You could click these buttons, but they would believe that the, the hand just uh, gets checked all the way to showdown once preflop ends. So, or once, you know, um, once the final decision has happened preflop. Um, but now there's, you can see this post flop abstraction details uh, factors all of this in. So it's fantastic. Uh, I've given a three bet size to seven big blinds because I think the big blind can actually three bet or jam. And uh, something we'll, we'll have to do, I'll show you this in a minute, is edit out the seven big blind three bet uh, for the uh, the small blind because they were they were a short stack in this hand so I'll show you how to do that as well we want flat calls of the three bet um, but it's only um, we only need one call it's not like it's you know the small blind's going to three bet and then the big blind calls and then uh, uh, we we call on the button so we only need uh, we only need the the original one here four bet all in let's go down to this bit now so we want to enable post flop play uh, you can see there it says when disabled all non all in pots are calculated uh, as a check down. So uh, yeah, we know that's not something that happens very often. Max players, you can change to two or three. We're gonna have three. Uh, bet size hints, I haven't done too much experimenting with this, to be honest. I just tend to leave it as it is. I do click the add all in button as well. Uh, and then we're gonna click finish. Okay, so this only ran for uh, what they're calling 10M. Uh, I think that's iterations. Um, but basically to do with the number of samples that they actually run uh, this for, and that's not gonna be anywhere near enough. Uh, if I just hover over, uh, or just click on button here, you can see that there's quite a lot of noise in here. So like queen nine off is a, is a minus EV play, and then queen eight off is slightly better. Um, if I go to this mode here, you can see that um, there's only a few hands in here that are 100% uh, raises, right? So we definitely don't wanna be using this just yet. We need to run the solution for much, much longer. Uh, this is, yeah, this is just not what we want uh, We want to see. So in order to run it for longer, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click this button up here. But before we do that, I'm just gonna show you um, about locking ranges uh, because you can see here, the small blind only has 12.2 big blinds. So they're not, probably not gonna be three betting to seven bigs. Uh, anytime so we can just lock that so we just double click take this down to zero it's now going to lock this range so no no hands are going to go into this range and then we've got calls and we've got jams as well so now we can run the solution and you can see uh, i ran this earlier on for a thousand m that's what this hand is up here uh, so we'll take a look at that in a minute uh, but yeah and then you can just click ok now once it's run for a decent amount of time what you can do is to just update the selected subtree. So if we uh, we just wanted to focus on the button, we could then just update the selected subtree. But remember what I said about it's really important to factor in the other ranges as well. So it's worth running this solution for quite a long time uh, first. Uh, I think 100M would be a good place to start. If you're still seeing like bits of, bits of noise, uh, so I'm um, trying to see if it, uh, like, uh, yeah, I guess, guess like this, where it's like all scattered all over the place and there's no sort of real um, obvious strategy or pattern, then uh, yeah, you just gotta, you gotta run it for, for longer and just keep, uh, just keep running it. All right, so let's take a look at the solution. Uh, so this is uh, the first mode you can see is just the EVs. And if we click along here, you can see the range. So I think this is a pretty good place to start in terms of what, you know, what range of hands can we open from the button. And this is the, the raising range. And you can see that, you know, we're not raising all ASEX hands. Uh, we, uh, we're not raising all pairs, uh, but I think this is a yeah, pretty, pretty reasonable range from the button. Uh, I think normally 25 big blinds, 20, I think it's 27 big blinds. You're gonna be raising more than this, like for chips, but in this situation, uh, we can't, we can't do that. We do have a player in the big blind who uh, has us, uh, has us covered. So yeah, this is this is the range, and if we go to strategy bars, the next one along, uh, this if there was an option to jam, we could actually see this um, in this grid. 
and we'll see that you know later on as well. Um, so just a way to sort of compare the two strategies uh, side by side. So I did give it an option to jam, but you can see there's no there's no jamming uh, zero zero percent. So uh, yeah, this is uh, this is the the solution, and uh, we've got another way to uh, to visualize it here in terms of uh, just hover over here. It's like a pie chart rather than bars. Uh, so yeah, I like this uh, I like this this one the, the most. Okay, so that's our raising range, and then. Uh, you can see small blind doesn't flat any hands. We took away the seven big blind three bet, and then uh, they're just going to be jamming, uh, jamming these hands. Uh, that's why it's all in green because green is jam, and its pink key color is is raise, and and purple is is call. But then we can get to the big blind, and we can start to look at their solution. So this again, this is something that I think the new HRC does does really really well is um, you know understands post flop play, and therefore. Um, shows that you know some hands are going to play better as calls than as than as jams or as three bets. So king queen suited for example is one of those those hands if you just gave it the option to to jam or call uh, I think it would say that jamming is going to be higher EV but um you know it's not working out that if we call then we get to play post flop with a hand that um does pretty well at realizing equity. So the reason why I do like this uh, strategy bars mode is that you can really visualize the uh, the strategy for the big blind so he's flatting all these hands in in purple. He's going to jam all the hands in green, and he's going to go for a three bet with the hands in uh, in red. If you do just want to focus on the hands uh, that that jam here, what you can do is go back to uh, this mode here, which uh, which is range, and then uh, click on click on the big blind, and you get to see uh, all the hands that go for the jam. Now, obviously, in this situation, this is an eleven dollar bounty builder. If you don't believe that this is the range of hands that are jamming then absolutely you've got to go in and you've got to edit this range. Uh, so really what I'm just showing you today is the equilibrium, you know, what this, um, what the solution, you know, looks like uh, in terms of opens and responses to the open in terms of flatting and three bedding and jamming. Right then, so let's see the result. Uh, so once the big blind does jam this, this range, this is our calling range. And you can see that uh, ace queen off, ace jack suited and eight plus are uh, all there 100% of the time. And then ace jack off, ace 10 suited, and sevens uh, less than 100%. If we click on EVs, you can see that those hands are right at the bottom of the range, sevens, ace jack off, ace 10 suited, um, lowest lowest EV calls. Uh, but if we go back to um, the, yeah, the strategy, I mean, these two are, are gonna show the same thing now. Uh, you can see that, yeah, those, those hands are in there some of the time, but I think going with a range like ace plus, ace queen off, ace jack suited looks pretty good to me. All right, so I'm gonna wrap the video up there. I'm not gonna show you the result. If you're looking at this and thinking, oh, please just, just show us if he called and won or you know, show us what happened. I think you're probably thinking about poker in the wrong way. Uh, when it comes to study, you just wanna be focusing on what you can do to get better, all right? It doesn't matter if Hero folded here. It doesn't matter if he called and lost. It doesn't matter if he called and won. Honestly, really doesn't matter. If you're still thinking like that, I encourage you to start focusing on the process, start focusing on what you can do to get better every single day. If you've got any comments about this video, leave them down below and I'll be back soon with a brand new video. But until then, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.